They had come to the place called Calvary. There they crucified him, and the criminals, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots. And the people stood looking on, but even the rulers with them sneered, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Christ, the chosen of God. The soldiers also mocked him, coming and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And an inscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, Save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do not not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation. We indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. Now it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. Then the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. So when the centurion saw what had happened, he glorified God, saying, Certainly, this was a righteous man. And the whole crowd who came together to that side, seeing what had been done, beat their breasts in return. But all his acquaintance and the woman who followed him from Galilee stood at a distance, watching these Now in the beginning God created heaven and earth, and he created man and placed him in the garden. God created man after his own image, not in a sense that man would look like God, but in a sense that you and I, we have potential to love. And God desires to have a loving relationship with you. God doesn't want to have a legal relationship. Man has disobeyed lost relationship and man had to leave the garden of Eden but because God loved man he gave law that he would have based on which he could forgive to a human race that people could have and maintain their relationship in all this command through Jewish law through their obedience to the works of the law the problem is that the law was never given with intent that 
somebody to fulfill it. The law, Hebrew law, was a complex of absolute objective moral values that only define what is evil and what is good. That only tell us what is what you should do or you should not do in order to be ethically and morally in good stand. The law was never given that it would make anyone perfect. The law says that if you fail in one thing, cursed is everyone who will not continue in all of those things. We all have come short of God's glory. God used the nation of Israel to reveal on them that no one, no one in the history of mankind is able to come to God based on their own good works. No flesh shall be justified by the works of the law. And because God foresaw our incapability to do anything good, to come to Him by our own good works, God foresaw the disease of our sin, the sin we all have. We have sin in Adam. God provided solution for this illness we all have. And that solution is the death and offering of the Lord Jesus Christ who came and died. Who took on himself the same form of flesh like you and I have. Same spirit, soul, and body. The architecture of human being was structured from these three dimensions that create equality with human flesh. Because the animals in Old Testament Animals, they had only consciousness and body. They don't have necessary spirit. So when a human being would offer an animal, there would not be equality. The atonement in Hebrew language in Old Testament would be only covering of those sins. It would not take those sins away. But because the Lord Jesus Christ was the word that was in the beginning with God, that was God, and become flesh and blood among us, and died in our place, he reached that equality, and he not only covered the sins, but he removed them. So they are far from each other, like the West and the East. So as we will partake communion, I will ask our deacons to come and come. And we will start distributing. Once you receive your communion cups, I will ask you if you could please hold them until the time we all are served. We'll partake the elements together.
Corinthians 11, chapter verse 23. For I receive from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Thank ye, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, as we're going to partake, if you know that you are truly born again Christian, we have an open communion. If you are a brother or sister in the Lord and visiting our church, I want to encourage you to partake it with us. If you don't know the Lord, and you have never committed your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, I highly encourage you not to take the communion. There are people describing Corinthians who will take it unworthily and who will die. But if you want to turn around and receive the Lord as the Savior of the Lord of your life and of your heart, you can go right on the spot and take communion at the same time. That's between you and the Lord. So I'm going to ask our deacon Ron if he could lead us in prayer for the bread. And uh, let's spend then maybe 30, 40 seconds just examining our hearts the privacy and intimacy of your own quietness. Just pull your heart to the wall. 